either. You know, an incoming president uh, being uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, attacked by an outgoing president and his administration to destroy him and try to get him impeached and try to get the people around him sent to jail and or fired is outrageous. And that's the real story. That's why you have all these uh, multiple, uh, you know, uh, felony uh, uh, leaks and, uh, you know, false stories, false narratives. It's absolutely outrageous. And if you, and if you look at this Trump uh, you know, collusion story, not a single shred of evidence. And on top of that, uh, you know, the top intelligence people said not a single vote was changed by the Trump, by the Trump administration. But then we keep having uh, one story after another. The most recent is, uh, you know, I think a guy in Virginia that was getting, uh, you know, registering dead people to vote. In my county, in, uh, in Guilford County, you know, the Register of Deeds found out there was 30 or 40,000 people that were still, oh, registered to vote and they're dead. So, yeah, the, the voting fraud and election fraud that the Democrats keep telling us that isn't happening is happening. And it's happening in spades and all over the country, particularly in places like California, where they're robbing the real votes of real citizens by allowing uh, non-citizens, illegal aliens, to vote. But I digress. And, uh, you know, uh, remember when I was telling you about how uh, AT&T was buying uh, Time Warner, which... The uh, subsidiary of that is CNN. And I said, boy, if I was at and I'd be mad as all get out if they were devaluing my property as I was negotiating, trying to buy this. And well, here we go. New York Post, CNN boss in crosshairs. That's Jeff Zucker, one of the top people, the first person I'd fire at at and Time Warner merger, if AP, at and Time Warner uh, merger approved. I would can about half the people at CNN. Uh, I'd start with Jeff Zucker. Number two would be uh, uh, Jim Acosta. And if I ever took over, which I'm not, but if I did, uh, I would be firing all the show bosses that were involved in this latest thing. I would be firing uh, Chris Cuomo, who sat on the air and said, we've done everything we can for Hillary Clinton. This is during the election. Wow, you're biased. You're fired. Gone. Poof. Jim Acosta, give me your credentials. You're sitting there arguing with a president-elect about a dossier, about uh, him, uh, you know, a totally bogus dossier that you should have ran down before you tried to stick, uh, uh, throw a pie in the face of the president-elect just before he was uh, elected president. Can we have a question? Can I have a question? Can I have a question? That's when Trump came up, your very fake news. And they are. And he didn't run down his own story, which, wow, he should have said, oh, this is a totally fake dossier. You know, you've got him, you know, urinating on beds with prostitutes and Michael Cohen. I told you, the, oh, wrong Michael Cohen. As soon as I'd have found that out, poof, gone. I'd be firing all kinds of people. And then I would, if I was the head of CNN, then I would get a meeting with the, uh, uh, the Trump administration and say, listen, we're still going to ask hard questions, but please stop calling us fake news. But they're, no, they're doubling down. What the press is doing is, well, you're bullying us. You're making it dangerous for us. No introspection where they, oh, yeah, you know, a Harvard uh, study, which is the most, one of the most liberal institutions in America, a Harvard study had upwards of 98% of the stories were, were uh, negative to Donald Trump and his administration. A CNN, I think I pegged it, something like 93% of the stories at CNN are negative to Donald Trump. That is propaganda. That is simply, uh, let's read it, propaganda, information especially of a biased or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Yes, destroying Trump is a point of view held by the deep state and the Democrats and some rhino Republicans. Yes. Oh, and also the mainstream media. And for them to sit back, and they started this stuff, as I pointed out many times, during the election. I'll just say this, uh, op-ed piece on the New York Times, which basically reporters, you know, are required to stop Donald Trump. You know, Michael Wolf, you know, reporters of their own volition or, do, you know, L.A. Times. Everybody was trying to, to stop Trump before the election. And listen, I'm telling you, the inmates don't run the asylum. I didn't tell my bosses what to do when I was at CNN. It's the bosses. That's why these three guys that were treated as chumps who should have been supervised, and, this, and they probably were supervised, and somebody did, but I'll never know that. And, uh, you know, basically they have to fall on their swords, and the people that should fall on their swords are the executives at CNN. The head of .com, Jeff Zucker, the head of CNN, uh, the head of Legal Standards, uh, the head of, uh, of uh, the Journal of Review, everybody who touched that story, fired, gone, poof. If you're that stupid, you need to be gone. And this is what's dangerous 
about the press doing this. They focus on non-stories and stories that are provably false and that aren't, aren't stories, and they don't, they don't actually do real journalism that shows the public things they need to be tipped off or worried about. And this is why places, and I predicted this, the layoffs are going to be stunning in 2017. I predicted that, and here we are, New York Times, editors, you cry, humiliating process of layoffs. They're getting rid of, uh, you know, 50 out of 100 editors, getting rid of them. They're trying to do more with less at, at, uh, at the New York Times. Are they laying people off because they're selling too many newspapers and getting too many clip, clicks online? I don't think so. I don't know if the mainstream media can recover after this. I, I thought after the election, okay, well, I'll go back to a more normal thing and I'll, I'll go back to, you know, just covering what I think is cool news and what's good and what people need to know about. And, you know, they're going to go back to being more. No, no, they tripled down. On, on the uh, bias and the hatred and the propaganda. They're not the news, period. They're, prop they're the propaganda. It's false. And then we have, uh, this is Rich. Remember I told you Bob Woodward, who, you know, Woodward and Bernstein, uh, Watergate, uh, of Watergate fame, which uh, basically was a penny at a break-in, and Nixon uh, erased 18 minutes of tape, and he went down over obstruction of justice, right? Uh, really, compared to Hillary Clinton uh, monetizing the uh, State Department uh, with uh, our, our enemies of America and the Russians and taking treasonous bribes by the millions, if not billions of dollars, uh, that's not a story. But Woodward, uh, Bob Woodward, had at one point at the Washington Post 20 people digging dirt on Donald Trump. 20 and remember my famous thing? Well, why don't you have 10 people work on the Clinton thing? Because, you know, she erased uh, 30,000 emails after she got a subpoena. She certainly didn't uh, maintain uh, the public records, which is a felony not to do so. It appears she obstructed justice. Uh, you know, the other, why don't you do that? The other things that they're not working on, besides the huge story of a, an outgoing president surveilling and trying to destroy an ingoing coming president, is Hillary Clinton. I mean, the Clinton Foundation, uh, the Clinton Global Initiative is, is closing down. Parts of the Clinton Foundation shutting down. People stopped giving money because they couldn't get any favors. That's not a story. You're kidding me. Loretta Lynch on the plane with a target and or witness an investigation. The former president for 30 minutes. Uh, her telling Comey uh, it's a matter, uh, you know, obstruction of justice is a lie. Well, that's a lie. Uh, Comey uh, basically coming up with, uh, you know, a way to uh, have some... Uh, nobody still has ever seen the Comey memo, incidentally. Remember I said they better, that memo better show up. Hey, nobody's ever seen that memo. A friend calling the New York Times and, well, here's what it says. Really? Nobody ever saw it? Totally anonymous source? And so, and he did it for express reason to get a, uh, a special prosecutor who happens to be his best friend, which by law, even the appearance of, uh, of uh, tawdriness or the appearance of uh, uh, unethical behavior is they should, he's required to step down. That's the law. Certainly, if he tried to get Robert uh, Mueller and wrote a, leaked a memo, which is another uh, law break, I, as far as I'm concerned, and also a confidential conversation with the president, I think the guy needs a criminal uh, defense attorney, uh, James Comey. That ought to be investigated. It's just unbelievable what they're not doing. But, oh, but the Trump collusion story, you know, the Trump-Russia collusion, the Trump, we, it's our duty to do. Man, stupid. Unbelievably stupid people in the White House press corps. And they, how, you're bullying us. You're making it unsafe for us. How dare anybody call them fake news. And remember what I told you? That the power of the press, real power of the press. This is why Woodward is saying, you know, uh, he blasts the MFM, MSM, mainstream media, of uh, fair-mindedness is essential if you want uh, people to trust you. This is the same guy that had 20 people try to dig up dirt on Donald Trump while he let all the uh, shenanigans and all the, uh, what I think, uh, illegal activity uh, with Hillary Clinton uh, just uh, uh, fall away. And he's talking about being fair. You had 20 people working on Trump and came up with nothing. Give back your Pulitzer. You should be embarrassed. The, the, what I said about the, the mainstream, their power is you have to think they are fair arbiters of the truth. And that outside of a mistake here or there, you know, that, that when they talk, that you'll listen and you'll believe them. What did Sarah Huckabee uh, Sanders say? Uh, you know, we're at a point where people don't trust the media. Ding, ding, ding. 
And they're now, oh, well, we're bullying us. And we're not. What they're, here's what they're saying. What they, if two synapses would you know, touch at one time, ding, 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 you know, they would say, wow, we're destroying our own jobs. We're destroying the media that we're in. Our bosses are allowing us and helping us and encouraging us to destroy our own business. People don't believe us. That's the problem. And then on top of that, we're chasing stories that nobody cares about, and they aren't real stories. And, uh, you know, here's another one. Uh, you know, uh, an army of lawyers fights for Trump. Yeah, well, armies of people in the deep state and the mainstream press, you know, the, the fourth arm of the third arm of the DNC, and also the Democrats are all attacking Donald Trump and uh, trying to make it out like he's illegitimate and most people don't like him when he is legitimate. Uh, he probably won by a wider margin, minus the uh, election and voter fraud, uh, and uh, most people do like him. And so uh, that's the stories that they're doing to uh, try to trash Donald Trump. Meanwhile, we have this little ditty from USA Today, and I, there's not much in the newspapers this week, folks. Really, just not much. Here's USA Today on uh, the 29th, and here we have poll only 12% support GOP health care plan. Really? Only 12%? Well, if you look at their own little graph on the front page of this, let's see if I can get it to focus up for you. Uh, there it is. You know, if you look on here, you, you, don't see that, that, you don't see that stat. I don't know how they came up with that. You know, you got uh, you know 30% that think it ought to go away, but not until they get another plan. You got a 14% that, uh, you know, uh, over here, that uh, think right here, that think that it should go away no matter what. That's 54%. I think it ought to go away. And then you have, you know, uh, I don't know, what, 10% that, that just like it the way it is? Well, those are the people, 11%. Oh, those are the people getting Medicaid free. They get the free stuff. Nothing's too good for the people that don't pay for it. And then you hear, uh, you know, this uh, piece of reporting, which you hear all the time. Uh, you know, now the CBO, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, they're going to lose, uh, 22 million people are going to lose their insurance if the GOP plan comes through. Well, we don't even know what the GOP plan P plan is, we get it here, you know, by, two, by 2016, 22 million people, yet they don't talk about the at least 22 million people that got thrown off their health care system. I know a manager at Darden Restaurants, you know, uh, Longhorn Steakhouse, he said, well, we used to have, uh, you know, insurance for our waiters and waitresses and bar people, and, you know, we couldn't uh, sell that anymore because Obamacare, uh, you know, made it illegal for us to, to sell that. So, you know, they talk about 22 million people not having insurance, but, you know, Boom, not long after Obamacare went in, guess what? Uh, everybody uh, that, you know, some 20, 25, maybe even 30 million people, uh, they lost their health care. And for the rest of the people, you know, like me, mine went up 130% and other people went up 200%, uh, you know, 300%. It was, uh, some people were priced completely out of it. Some people lost it altogether because, you know, it wasn't Obamacare compliant with the essential services, you know, the free stuff that you were forced to pay for, even if you didn't use it, sex change operations, prenatal care, uh, you know, vision, dental, I mean, nothing too good for the people who don't pay for it. You know, you probably have 25 or so, maybe 30 million people who lost their health care because of Obamacare and more are losing their health care as uh, providers are leaving so where there's no Obamacare uh, providers in the state because they can't make money because they have to provide too many things for free. But they don't tell you about that. That's why Trump uh, says it's imploding. And the bad thing about not trusting the media is that, you know, uh, the media is a watchdog. I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat, but, you know, Obama, Obama, Trump's going to make a mistake. Uh, I don't want him to, but, you know, his administration, somebody's going to make a mistake and you'll need a watchdog. That's what the press, that's what Thomas Jefferson said. The media acted as a watchdog to keep the government straight. So we, the people, got a fair deal. And when you don't have a watchdog and people chasing real stories and asking real questions, and doing real things, guess who suffers? Yes, we the people, as they're pu pushing some bogus story that fits their political agenda to try to get rid of Donald Trump. That's their agenda. That's what they want to do. They want to destroy Donald Trump. And they want to sit in the White House press briefing room and sit on the set of MSNBC and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika, what's her name? 
talking about how Donald Trump's unhinged. He's psychiatric. There's something wrong with him, with his, uh, his psychiatric, his psyche. You know, something he's mentally ill. That's what they want to, they want to put every false narrative and false thing that they can't pack up out there, including psychiatrists that think, oh, he should be taken out of office. They should, they should be there. They should surrender their medical license for watching somebody on TV and making a uh, diagnosis like that without ever seeing somebody. But I digress. Well, what I'm saying is that we, the people lose. We don't find out what we need to find out that is a profound, uh, that's what the what reporters should be doing, looking after the public. Here's what I think you need to, 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 to know about. Here's some of the stories that you need to uh, be aware of so you can prepare yourself, so you can understand what's going on, understand the world you live in, instead of this crazy uh, false Russia narrative story. But here's one for you that they're not really covering much, and this is, uh, Cutter says, Saudi-led ultimatum, unreasonable. Did you know that they're blockading uh, a cutter. You know we have a, uh, the biggest military base, Air Force base, military and Air Force base in the region in Qatar. Do you know Bahrain, where we have a naval base, is against Qatar and helping to blockade them? Now, do you know what kind of a mess that is? Do you know that Turkey, a NATO member, is helping Qatar? Do you know uh, Iran, which uh, we're not really on great relationships, where we have a uh, you know an air base and a military base. In Qatar, Iran is giving their their uh, help to uh, Qatar. Do you know that? Yeah, you think that might be just a bit of a problem that Americans should know about? Yeah, I do. Hey, let me sh- let me tell you about this: Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, all want Qatar to meet the 13-point ultimatum in return for uh, ending the blockade of the Emirates. They got a blockade. They're cutting them off. Uh, our, our, our Air Force and military base is there. Where our naval base, the 5th Fleet is, Bahrain, that country's against them. You think that's just a little complicated? You think Americans need to know about that? You think that might cause a nasty little regional war? And again, here we have, uh, what do they want them to do? They want them to cut ties with Iran, the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, uh, Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah also shut down Al Jazeera. They think it's a propaganda arm. They want to shut. They also want to get paid reparations for the the damage that these terrorist groups have done. I mean, it's unbelievable. They give it an ultimatum. Now uh, they gave that a, you know a few weeks ago, and it's going to be up soon in, in July, early July. What's going to happen when uh, Qatar doesn't meet that ultimatum? Turkey is uh, throwing their support and supposedly has a base in Qatar. Uh, Iran is throwing their support to Qatar. Uh, what's going to happen if Egypt and Saudi Arabia decide to roll tanks across the border? Uh, you know, you get there from Saudi Arabia. I, I don't know. Don't you think the press ought to be reporting on that? Here's another one, the U.S. dollar. Do you know that in uh, January on the USDX, that's a, a basket of currencies that measures the value of the dollar, it was 102 on the USDX sometime in January, okay? That's, that's right up here somewhere, Okay. And so, and now, brrr, right now, boom, this big drop-off, it's where it is now. It's 95. Listen, for a world reserve currency that trillions of dollars of business is done every year in, that's a big, big drop-off. Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, uh, had a press conference on Thursday. You think any of the pinheads at uh, you know the White House press corps would say, hey, you know, the dollar lost uh, 5% today. Uh, do you guys want that to happen as Treasury Secretary? You're head of the Exchange Tra- Stabilization Fund, the ESF. Is that what you're wanting to do? Do you want the dollar to sell off that much? Wouldn't that cause inflation for us, uh, you know, Americans here at home if the dollar devalues? Uh, nobody asks any, any question about that at all. I mean, they lost a half a percent on Thursday. Now think about it. If you had a million dollars, that'd be like you uh, losing uh, five grand. Wouldn't that be like that? If you had a million dollars, what would one grand be? You know, one uh, percent. What would that be? $10,000? Okay, so a half percent be $5,000? You lost that one day? Whew. Stunning. That's a lot of money. If you add, add billions of dollars, if you add trillions of dollars, it's a lot of money. Now, you know, you have a half a percent in a single day? The dollar dives? That's huge. I talked to my friend Gregory Manorino about that. He said, oh, they're trying to kill the dollar. Yeah, they want to pay back in much more devalued dollars. I'll tell you something else that I think happened. We just had a complete turnaround in interest rates. I mean, you hear the Fed, Janet Yellen, talking about how she's on track to raise rates. 
She also doesn't think there'll ever be another calamity in our lifetime. <laughs> Funny. Uh, that means we're in trouble. One uh, trader said that if she has that view that we'll never have another calamity in our lifetime, we're in deep trouble. But the Fed is trying to, you know, get rid of all this uh, toxic mortgage debt that they bought, a couple of trillion dollars. Now it's worth something. They want to get that off their books. Books. Uh, the Bank of Japan wants to remove all the junk off their books. So does the Bank of England. So does the ECB. That means they're going to raise interest rates. I said, well, that sounds like debt destruction to me. It sounds like the the bonds are going to lose value. And Greg said, yeah, you're right. It is. But, you know, uh, they're going to print money to offset that. I mean, uh, you know, years ago, I said, we're going to have inflation and deflation at the same time. Isn't that inflation and deflation at the same time? I mean, they're not going to print money to bail out the Puerto Ricans. They defaulted on $74 billion in debt and have a half a, 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 a trillion dollars, 50, you know, they have $50 billion in unfunded pension liabilities. I mean, look at the Illinois. Anybody covering that? Illinois can't sell Powerball tickets anymore. They're not solvent enough to do so. They have $250 billion in unfunded pension liabilities, $127 or $30 billion in debt. And, oh, yeah, they owe, uh, you know, uh, some of their contractors and, and people doing work for them $14.5 billion. Press didn't cover that story either. You think uh, California and New York and uh, uh, New Jersey and Connecticut, those are states that are rumored to also have deep trouble. Any, anybody doing any work on that? Uh, pensions are going to be destroyed. I mean, they're just going to be destroyed. I'm, I got uh, Lynette Zhang, who's a, uh, uh, you know, a top uh, Wall Street pro and also a chief uh, market uh, analyst at a gold trading firm out in uh, Phoenix. And, uh, you know, she worked for Lehman Brothers. And she says, you know, I... I think uh, we're close. I mean, uh, you know, she's telling me uh, if you if you watch, you know, where look, rich people are exiting the bond and stock market. Rich people are getting their wealth to safe places: gold, silver, diamonds, collectibles, land. Rich people are leaving the market. She's going to be the early Sunday release. Lynette Zhang, very interesting lady. You will love uh, hearing her. I was going to interview her for 20, 25 minutes. I ended up doing forty some minutes with her. Very interesting lady. A very uh, common sense. Uh, perspective that uh, anybody, even a guy like me, can follow. Uh, you'll want to see her for the early Sunday release. Here's another story. And again, back to the big story was the president, the uh, outgoing president, using all the resources of the intelligence services, the FBI, uh, and even foreign intelligence services, as, uh, you know, um, Judge, Judge Napolitano has said. He got kind of taken to the woodshed shed for that. But uh, you know, that was later proven true that, uh, you know, foreign intelligence services were being, you know, used and uh, utilized by Obama against Donald Trump and his incoming team. Well, here's Susan Rice, who's a former uh, top uh, national security person for uh, uh, President Obama. And she agrees to testify before House uh, intelligence panel behind closed doors. She unmasked all these uh, uh, Americans that they were surveilling. They got caught up in surveillance, you know, including like the General Flynn, who they printed up a transcript of his phone call with the Russian ambassador, I believe, Kislyov, which is illegal leak, a felony leak of information. Uh, you know, they're investigating him. He still hasn't been charged with a single thing. Uh, they say he didn't uh, basically um, uh, uh, disclose some ties he had, some business dealings or whatever. Still, not a single charge has been uh, uh, lev levied against him. And he certainly isn't accused of colluding with the Russians to help spike the election, to help, uh, you know, juke the election for Donald Trump. But she uh, says she didn't do anything wrong. And I'm telling you, I think this whole, this whole Russia collusion story thing, I, 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 I just wonder... Uh, if the Russian Donald Trump collusion, that part of the story, I just wonder if this is just not being used for a giant uh, uh, a cover so they could say, well, yeah, we surveilled the Trump administration, but, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, he was colluding with.